Hey guys, Mark Fresh, Protect Dog Training, and Jazzy. And Jazzy is the female out of the two, out of Daisy and Rico. And I've got BIN numbers if you're interested, but uh, no name is what I'm calling him. The brother of Jazzy is available. And uh, he's going to be a good one. He's in there yapping right now. Let me go ahead and shut that because he's just being too noisy. Uh, he's wound up like an eight day clock because we're starting to have pattern and routine set in, right? So now they're figuring out what's going to happen and they're getting excited about it. And look where their head's at, right? All of it starts to build as you start. She's going right into behaviors that she's getting benefited from on her own and this is only what we got seven days they've been here and i think it's three or four days that i've worked them in, in this i'm going to keep up the clicker and then ask her to go to places like how smart she is she is very very intelligent little dogs keep in mind she's only about nine weeks old ten weeks somewhere in there good so i'm going to work on my down more than anything else because she's doing everything else and i'm going to keep trying to accent this nope nope She's not giving me a total down. I'm trying to outweigh her. Her brain is so floaty as far as the young puppy mind that has no attention span, right? No, anything that stimulates them, smell, noise, whatever it may be, is all a factor at this age because their brain needs to mature and settle down a little bit. So there it is. There's what we're after. She gave it to me finally, right? Good girl. Take your palm, spin it downwards. Now she's trying to get to the food and that gets you what you want. You're not pushing down. You're just creating a little bit of a, a little bit of pressure so that they want to go up underneath it to get to that smell, which is in forward of that. Palms here and the food's back here. So they're trying to get to it. And as they try to reach for it, when you put your palm down, there it is. Okay. So, and now we just keep it up. Now she's pushing the food off. That's why you got to make sure she's back on the table far enough and don't have any of it hit the ground because her nose is going to go right to that ground and want to smell and go crazy. She's just a baby. Yep. Good girl. Okay. So let me concentrate on her. And what I'm after here is for her to start picking up on when she's doing the right thing based on my body language. All right. So, yep. Up. And voice tone with verbalization. Remember, we go through a whole stage at this age and anywhere all the way up to six months of age, but in the beginning especially, a lot of sound and vocabulary, right? Hup, you want to go bye-bye, get in the kennel, all the things you do with a dog to manage them, everything's associated with some kind of emotional states of mind that we're concentrating on. This is excitement of coming out. And I've got the food bowls all ready for them and the food sitting there. When I get back, they'll go into the kennels. I'll go get the food bowls and right away feed them. Pattern, routine. Good. You're playing on the dog's natural tendencies to get into classical conditioning. It's all about that for a dog. And it's all contextual. People don't understand that. If you have a dog that's going crazy at the window and winding up wanting to go after the mailman, why do they do that? Because in the beginning, it's a little bit, but it's second day, third day, fourth day. Every day that mailman comes, rattles that little mail slot, and then walks away. What do you think this dog does? He gets used to being classically conditioning, knowing what's going to happen before it happens. That's why I say the dogs are so aware of time. You get home around five o'clock, they don't know it's five o'clock, but they know that dad comes home at that certain time. I've had dogs, and when I was a kid, we had a collie, and the dog would know that when the person was coming home, when the man in the house was coming home, he would hear that truck, a little Toyota that years ago, back in the 60s, um, when I was just a baby, before I even got into dogs, but I just remember it vividly, and the dog would sit there and, and his ears, this was what sort of thing that got me really wanting to be into dogs, because I saw the amazing things that dogs did. That dog heard that truck get off the freeway from a long way away and knew he was coming. You could see the dog's body language, you could see the dog's attitude change, and it was all based on being able to know that the time, the contextual time of the day was there, and then when they heard the engine come off that freeway, it could be a mile and a half away, I think. It was a long way away. And then the dog knew it, and you'd see the dog's body language getting all excited. And by the time that he came running around that corner, around the road, and he, our property could see it, um, he was already wound up and excited and sitting there barking, hitting the fences, saying, Dad, Dad, you know, that excitement of the owner coming back home. It was amazing. And these are the sort of things, the imprints as a child that I got that made me know that dogs are amazing. They really are.
There's a reason that I love being a dog trainer. It's because of the animals, but I love to try to show people and to teach. It's my whole, I thrive on it, right? To teach, to educate people on all the things that a dog can give you if, if done properly. If you work an animal properly and you understand the wiring, hard wiring of a dog, and then how they integrate with humans, right? The human factor is such a big part of it. You hear me accenting that a lot with my videos as of late because of, of a dog like, uh, of uh, gunzo and with that the lack of relationship dynamic i find that a lot of times that's really the critical part you know it's the human factor it's that relationship dynamic that causes all our problems and people have all this knowledge online nowadays it's the internet's all over the place and they want to get off the couch to start trying to learn and grow with their dog they already have perceived attitudes about a dog they think dogs just can be thrown in the backyard he's gonna be a good dog and they don't realize that they they need to work at it they need to be a part of the whole process of of building a dog taking that this clay molding shaping and forming this clay to a finished product and for me that's personal protection and a companion dog a dog i can place any take any place with me but it'll eat you when i tell him to and we want to set up psychological deterrent we want to set up everything we can to maximize what that dog gives you in your lifestyle and then if you do it you reach a plateau where you start to learn how much more a dog can give you than what you expect as a civilian i say civilian in other words normal society yep and then you start to learn how much and, and handlers law enforcement officers they see it there's a lot of people that actually use it, search and rescue. Anybody that actually does something with a dog and has to put in the not time to learn and grow with their animal gets to a point that they, they realize how amazing dogs are. Dogs are so amazing. It's just, they're such a neat creature. They're man's best friend for a reason. Yep. Good. And a lot of this right now, I'm just trying to get her used to the, look at her. She's a very smart dog. Now it's about body motion right now because she's watching me like a hawk. So everything I'm doing is a little very minute little body language that shows her where the right answer is at, right? She doesn't know this. She's not doing it because she really knows it. She's doing it because she's picking up on the instincts of what I'm giving her. And the more I build on this, the better she'll get it. Watching me, paying attention, and starting to know what I want out of her because she's a herding dog. So this is where her breeding is all about, is watching and paying attention to their owners, their handlers, their... Uh, herdsmen that are out there herding the sheep or the cows or whatever it may be they've been bred for a purpose and it's amazing to see a dog that that has that right and every dog's hard wiring is a little different i mean you get those um terrier breeds can't think of the name patterdales and some of those high drive terrier breeds and their wiring is all about their breeding that they're a ratting dog right they're a totally different dog and their tenacity is just off the charts but the hard wiring is so in-depth that when you start to work a dog like that, you start to really appreciate it. That's why trainers that are out there, the ones that some of them that I respect, get these dogs that are Patterdales, not because they're really going to do anything, but they're learning so much from the animal because the hard wiring is so tight, right? And that hard wiring really shows you a lot when you're starting to work with dogs. Good. And that's the joy of having a dog like that, right? Now, I, I waited her out. I was trying to see if she would lay down on her own to understand that she's getting what she wants by doing the behavior. She has no clue yet, but she will. She'll start giving the behavior on her own based on, oop, I'm yakking. I should have had more better timing. You know, did you see what she was doing? She was going after that food, and if I would have had the food down there and said good and started the pattern of the good and the hand going down to the be bench, I would have had her in a, such a spot that I could have um, conveyed the thought that I wanted to, which is good gets you the food comes to you, right? There it is. Good. But she is at least doing this. Good. Nope. 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 So now I'm going negative punishment in its own little way, which means I'm not giving her the food when she doesn't do something I want her to. And she'll figure that out with time too. Good girl, Jesse. Good, Jesse. Yep. Good, 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 Jesse. Good, good. Yay. She heard Jesse. She doesn't know her name yet, but she will. Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking to the truck to get more hot dogs and Jessie doesn't want to go because she's, look at her, she's back to the truck. I'm over here trying to get another bag of hot dogs and she doesn't want to quit the game yet. But I'm going to do just a little bit more and then I'll end it. <laughs> Funny and heck. I love dogs, man. Dogs are man's best friend for a reason. They're an amazing creature. They really are. God really gifted us when he gave us this creature amazing animals and all they do for us in our society how many functions that we have them doing in our societies search and rescue and 
even now we're doing things that um, the dogs are fulfilling a purpose of being a, a uh, emotional support dogs and in trauma dogs you know i don't even know if they have or what name they call it but the fire departments and law enforcement are losing a lot of times is bring out a a doodle and another just to give companionship to people that have been through trauma and the dogs pick up on it and they know what their job is believe it or not they go out there and they do whatever they can to help support that human that's in pain is the more they do it the more the dog starts to give that emotional state of mind to the people to help them the dogs sense it they know i'll give you a good example I'll go every now and then with a, let's say, a Labrador a breed that's been bred for um, service dogs and things with the right genetics. And as I start to work them into the public, I will find it a weekend, let's say, real busy, and the whole aisle is just packed. And I will go down and I will have the dog in a certain mental state of mind at, because of the training, because of how much I built the dog to a certain point. And I'll, I'll see this thing, and I'll start to take my image down to zero. And nope, with me, and I'll, and I'll have a certain attitude. And the dog will sense it and they'll start putting their body into me as they go around people. And that's what you want in a good service dog. A dog that wants to be there to help their owners. And that comes from genetics from the dog's Labradors, do, you know, certain breeds that are very prone to that. Golden Retrievers is another breed that's used for service dogs a lot. Seeing eye dogs. Anything that's been ba basically bred and used for service, for seeing eye dogs, it usually can be a very good service dog as well, right? So amazing things animals are just an amazing thing for society and if people realized what they could have out of if they were willing to work for it and understood the the larger aspects good nope i gotta get her to hold on that she now is dropping and going to the table for the food and that's good good yeah good girl good there you go good I'm not giving it to her until she actually puts her elbows on the ground. All right, there we go. There we go. Good, and we're done. Good girl, Jazzy. Good. Nope. You remember earlier I said her name and then bounced away. She doesn't know it yet, so I'm going to go to that pattern. Everything's about pattern. Jazzy. Nope. Nope. She doesn't have the attention span to handle it, so I'll just get away with it. Jazzy. Yep. And I'll just end it, right? Because it didn't come to me. It's not a big deal. It's not going to break the bank. It will as we keep working and she keeps putting all these dots together and she starts figuring out what my patterns and routines are all about. And I'll build the dog into really understanding what she's doing, right? No good and yes. The clicker, classical conditioning, and all the things she's learning. She's going to be a good one. She's smart. She says, I'm a smart girl. Wait until we pull out that gunny sack, huh? You say bye to the people. Good girl. Jazzy. She's my girl, huh? All right, talk to you guys later. Mark Frosch, Protect Dog Training, and Jazzy signing off. I'm Jazzy.